Hi folks, hope you're okay today. We've just done our sermon on uh, bearing fruit in gospel ministry and uh, we're now going to do the fight in gospel ministry. And I hope this is a blessing to you and an encouragement to you in, in your walk with the Lord. Let's pray. Dear Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your love and grace. And Father, I pray that this sermon will be a blessing to people and I pray that you will seal it to their hearts. May they be encouraged, may they be strengthened, and may they know your love and grace. In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. <clears throat> I have fought the good fight, and I have kept the faith. And that's what we're going to look at today, is the fight in gospel ministry. I have fought the good fight, I have kept the faith. The Apostle Paul saw his ministry as a fight, it was a spiritual battle. And we need to see that the Christian life is a battle. General Douglas MacArthur said it is fatal to enter any war without the will to win it. Maybe I'm speaking to someone today and you have drooping hands, you're discouraged. You're discouraged in the ministry, you're discouraged in the work of the Lord and you feel like giving up. Well number one, be strong in the Lord. In gospel ministry Ephesians chapter 4 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10 says finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of the is my God doesn't want you to be discouraged he doesn't want you to have drooping hands Romans chapter 1 16 it says I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God for the salvation of everyone who believes Paul was not a man who was discouraged in the sense that he, he just knew that the gospel was the power of God and he never gave up if you turn to 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 says for God gave us a spirit not of fear but of power and of self-control he doesn't want you to be fearful he doesn't want you to be discouraged in 2 Samuel chapter 10 verse 12 we're told to be strong in Psalm 27 verse 1 we're told not to fear in Haggai chapter 2 verse 4 let's go to Haggai chapter 2 verse 4 Haggai, chapter 2, verse 4. We'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there, we'll get there. Haggai, uh, chapter 2, verse 4. Get there, come on. There we are. Haggai, uh, chapter 2. Uh, verse 4 it says yet now be strong O Zerubbabel declares the Lord be strong O Joshua son of Tehodi the high priest be strong O you people of the land declares the Lord work for I am with you declares the Lord of hosts so work the Lord is with you and um, Matthew Henry says the old Puritan writer we have no sufficient strength of our own all our sufficiency is of God we can do it because we're depending on God. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah. Isaiah uh, chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Verse 28. Isaiah 40, 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even you shall faint and be weary, and young men shall, bear, uh, shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. God promises you, as you meditate upon him, you'll become strong and God will lift you. Isaiah 41 verse 10. 
Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. Don't fear. He is with you. God will stand with you. In 1 Samuel, uh, in the life of David, God stood with him. In 2 Timothy 4.17. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4.17. Two Timothy four seventeen. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord stood with uh, with Paul, and God will stand with you. Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter one. Joshua chapter 1 verse 9 and 11. Have I not commanded you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. So the Lord has promised you that he's with you. You can be strong. Because you can know that God is with you. That he'll meet your need. And that he's going to be with you in the midst of your ministry. Whether it be your marriage. Whether it be raising a family. Whatever it is. Whether it's running a church, youth work. Uh, children's work, whatever, whatever God has called you to do, work situation in the safety of the world, whatever it is, if God has called you, God says be strong, he's with you in that. Secondly, know your enemy in gospel ministry. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians uh, chapter 6, verse 11 and 12. Put on the whole armour of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers, over the present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. There is a demonic activity going on, and that is your enemy, my friend. In the Vietnam War, the Americans lost it because they underestimated their enemy. General Ulysses Grant said, The art of war is simple enough. Find out where your enemy is, get at him as soon as you can, strike him as hard as you can, and keep moving. And in the Vietnam War, the Americans lost it because they underestimated their enemy. And you're underestimating your enemy. Your enemy is not your personal temptations, your personal struggles. Your enemy is higher than that. Your enemy isn't the people around you who are doing your editing. It's higher than that. It's the devil and his emissaries. They are the ones behind it all. And he's trying to bring you down. He's trying to huck you in and huck you in and give you a little bit here and give you a little bit there. And he's just trying to bring you in, bring you in. And then as he brings you in, he wants to chop your head off. The enemy wants to annihilate your marriage. The enemy wants to annihilate your ministry. He wants to decimate it, destroy it. And if he can just hook you in a little bit, boom, he wants to take your head off and take you down. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, the devil is blinding people. And uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 3, 7, he tra entraps people. In 1 John chapter 5 verse 19, he's in control of the worldly system. And in 1 Peter 5, 8 and 9, he is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And you're underestimating the enemy. How do we deal with the devil, a devil and, and, and uh, his emissaries? Well, in Matthew uh, chapter 4, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 1, uh, Matthew chapter 4, Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 1, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil, and after fasting forty days and forty nights he was hungry. The temper came and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. How do you defeat the devil? 
know the Bible, learn the Bible, meditate on the Bible, and allow the Bible to fill your mind so that you can quote the Bible back at the doubts that come to you. Curry Ten Boom said, the first step on the way to victory is to recognize the enemy. The enemy is not the people around you. The enemy is not your personal temptations. The enemy is him above the devil who seeks to destroy you. Fight him by knowing the instruction manual, the word of God. Thirdly, put the whole armor of God on. So let's just recap. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong. Secondly, know your enemy. And thirdly, put the whole armor of God on. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. Therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints. And also for me, the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. We're to put on the whole armour of God. In that armour, if you look at verse 14, Ephesians chapter 6 verse 14, it says, Stand therefore having fastened on the belt of truth. Have the belt of truth on, right? If you're going to stand against the wiles of the devil, you need the belt of truth, okay? Now, a lot of people say, we don't need doctrine. Doctrine divides. We don't need doctrine. But it says here, put on the belt of truth. So which is right? We don't need doctrine. Put on the belt of truth. Which is biblical. This is biblical. Put on the belt of truth. That is biblical. Ephesians 4, 14. So that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by cunning schemes, by crafty of deceitful schemes. Rather, speaking the truth in love, we are to grow up in every way in him who is the head into Christ, for whom the whole body is joined and held together. So we're not to be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. We're to be growing in the knowledge of Christ and in the doctrine of Christ. Yes, it's a life in Christ, but it's also a teaching about Christ. But to stand up for the faith and biblical truth in Jude chapter 1, uh, uh, in Jude 3. We go to Jude, verse 3. Jude, verse 3. It says, Beloved, although I was very eager to write to you about your common salvation, I found it necessary to write appealing to you to contend for the faith that was once for all delivered to the saints. We're to contend for the faith. We're to know sound doctrine. We're to know sound teaching. The Muslims have false teaching. The Mormons have false teaching. The Jehovah's Witnesses have false doctrine. False doctrine. The atheists have false doctrine. You're to know the doctrine. You're to know right teaching. And if you don't know the right teaching, you're going to be knocked sideways all the time, going up and down. You're always going to be basing your life on feelings rather than upon sound teaching of the Word of God. Then we're to put on the blessed plate. Uh, we're then we're to be fitted with the gospel of peace. Uh, Ephesians six nineteen. Ephesians six nineteen. Notice this. In Ephesians 6, 19. And also for me that the words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel. Paul was a gospel man. He never outgrew the gospel. He was always focused on the gospel. He always proclaimed the gospel. 
If you start to move away from the simplicity of the gospel that Jesus died and rose again and gave his life for you and was saved by grace, if you start to move away from that simple teaching, you're going to lose it, my friend. Paul was a gospel man. Are you a gospel man? Or a gospel woman? Then we need to have faith. Ephesians 6.16 Ephesians 6, 16, we read, In all circumstances take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish the flaming darts of the evil one. We need faith. Matthew 17, 20 says, Faith as a mustard seed, as a grain of mustard seed can move mountains. And Ma Ma Matthew 9, 22, Faith can make you whole. Galatians 2.20, faith is centered on Christ. 1 Corinthians 2.5, faith rests on God. James 1.3, faith is tested. 1 Peter 1.7, faith is precious. And Hebrews 10.22, faith is confident. And in 2 Corinthians 5.7, we live by faith, not by sight. And in Galatians 5.6, we trust Christ. We need faith, my friend. Trust, keep trusting, keep believing in the word of God. We need to put on the helmet of salvation, Ephesians 6, 17. And take the helmet of the salvation and the sword of the spirit. We need the helmet of salvation. We need to understand that we're, we're new creatures in Christ, that Jesus died and rose again for us. And in him, we've died and risen with him. We are now new creatures. We are now saved. We are now born again. We need to understand the blessings of that salvation. 1 Thessalonians 5.8 1 Thessalonians 5.8 1 uh, Thessalonians 5.8 But since we belong to the day, let us be so by having put on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet of the hope of salvation. The helmet of hope salvation this is armor this is roman armor that we're to put on as it were spiritual armor there's no armor for retreating the sword the shield the helmet is to face the enemy we need the helmet of salvation and we need the sport sword of the spirit which is the word of god ephesians 6 verse 17 in psalm 119 verse 11 we're to hide the word in our hearts in Proverbs 30 verse 5, the word is flawless. 2 Corinthians 3.16, the word of God has been breathed out. God breathed. Revelation 19.13, Jesus is the word. Romans 10.8.9, we become saved through the word. Matthew 24.35, Christ is the word. And his word will never pass away. Psalm 105. The word is a lamp to our feet. In James 12, 2, we're to obey the word. And in Isaiah 55, verse 11. If we go to Isaiah 55, verse 11. Isaiah uh, 55, verse 11. Isaiah 55, uh, verse 11. Says... So shall my word that goes out from my mouth, it shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and shall succeed in the thing which I sent it. Know the word of God. Uh, General Robert E. Lee said, In all my perplexities and distress, the Bible has never failed to give me light and strength. President Abraham Lincoln said, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man. All the good of the Saviour of the world is communicated through to us through the book. The Word of God. Let's know the Word of God. Imbibe the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Apply the Word of God. And then praying in the Spirit. Talks about praying in the Spirit. In Ephesians 6. Let's go back to Ephesians 6.
Ephesians 6. Praying, verse 18, 618, Ephesians 618. Praying at all times in the Spirit with all prayer and supplication. Praying in the Spirit. Uh, Dr. Barnes, a great old commentator, said, No matter how complete the armour, no matter how skilled we may be in the science of war, no matter how courageous we may be, we may be certain that without prayer we shall be defeated. We need to be praying in the Spirit. We need to be praying for each other in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 25. We need to be praying in crisis. Acts chapter 4, verse 29. And uh, if we go to Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. He will meet every need that you have as you pray. So we've come to the end, and uh, I just want to read a few thoughts now. In Jude, chapter th uh, Jude verse 3, it says, earnestly contend for the faith. We need to remember that we have to be strong, Ephesians 6.10, that God is with us. We need to remember our enemy, the enemy is the devil, and we need to be equipped to deal with him, and we equip ourselves in the word of God. We need to put the whole armour of God on, which is the belt of truth, which is the gospel of peace, which is the shield of faith, which is the helmet of salvation, which is the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and which is praying in the spirit. One writer said, no battle of any importance can be won without enthusiasm. And, and, and some of you are, are, are discouraged. You, you're looking at the problems of the nation. You're looking at the problems of your church and the problems of your life. And you're discouraged. And if you lose that joy, if you lose that enthusiasm, you're defeated. You need to get it back. Napoleon Bonaparte says, victory belongs to those most persevering. You've got to persevere in the truth of the word of God in your ministry. Winston Churchill, said, never, Winston Churchill said, never yield to the apparently overwhelming might of the enemy. Just because your enemy looks bigger than you, don't yield to the enemy. Stand firm. And John Wesley says, and I love this quote. And then we'll go to 1 Timothy 6.12. John Wesley says, I want to know one thing, the way to heaven. To, to, I want to know one thing. The way to heaven's home to land, safe on the happy shore. God himself has condescended to teach the way. For this very end he came from heaven. And he hath written it down in a book. Oh, give me that book, John Wesley. 1 Timothy 6.12 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of eternal life to which you were called and about which you made the good confession in the presence of, of many witnesses. 2 Timothy 4.7 2 Timothy 4.7 I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. My friends, we're in a battle. We're in a fierce battle today. And many of you are discouraged. Well, look at those who went before you. Look at Polycarp. Look at Clement. Look at Ignatius. Look at Irenaeus, the great early church fathers who were persecuted. Look at Athanasius who was kicked out his bishopric so many times and yet he still stood firm. Look at the great reformers, Calvin, Luther. And uh, many of them were persecuted for the faith but they stood tall. Look at the great Puritans who were ejected out of the Anglican church and didn't even have pulse pits, some of them, and starved to death, yet they preached the gospel. Look at people like William Tyndale, who translated the Bible but lost his faith. Look at the great missionaries like William Carey and Adonai Justin, who struggled on the mission field but yet persevered and proclaimed the gospel. 
Look at people like Spurgeon who preached the gospel and uh, struggled with depression and had so many detractors. And, and near the end of his life, he was on his own in the Baptist Union. So many departed from the faith and yet he stood strong for the word of God. Look at all the great people that have suffered and died for the faith. And you've been called today to continue the battle, continue the war against Satan, to continue to proclaim the gospel. Remember the Moravian bishops, uh, Moravian missionaries. They wanted to preach the gospel to the slaves and, and the slave owner on an island would not let them preach the gospel to them. So these Moravian missionaries sold themselves into slavery so that they could be taken to the plantation so that they could preach the gospel. They sold themselves into slavery so that they could preach the gospel to these people. And when they were going off the ship and they were going to, to be sent off as slaves, they said, worthy is the Lamb. You know, they, they, they praised Jesus and said, he's worthy of this. He's worthy of this sacrifice that we're doing that he should have a people that he died for and we are willing to lay down our lives to share the gospel so that people could be saved. And they sold themselves into slavery so that they could preach the gospel to slaves. And God has called you, my friend, at this time. It's no time to be getting discouraged. It's no time to be your head drooping down. It's no time to, to be to be fed up. It's no time to think the enemy is too big for you. It's no time to feel that you've got no resources. It's no time to feel you, that you can't do it. You've got to lift your head up and you've got to start being joyful and go forward and know that God commands you to be strong. He commands you to watch out for your enemy and he commands you to put the whole armor of God on. May you be strong and may you serve the Lord. Don't get discouraged, don't feel down. Don't give up in the ministry. Don't give up. Your best is yet to come. Your best is yet to come. There is much more for you to do. There is much more service for you. There is better work for you to do. And God is going to bless you. So come on, be strong and serve the Lord in your day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this day. And I pray for those who are discouraged today. Strengthen them in their ministry. Strengthen them in their work. And may they know your love and grace. Bless them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My website is jasonbursepreacher.com. jasonbursepreacher.com. God bless you and have a lovely day. God bless.